Hello. Wait. That's better, although I now look naked. Oops. <laughs> it's Gothtober. I am so excited. It's also October, which means it's my birthday month. I'm gonna move away from that angle because I think it makes it obvious that I've been sobbing this morning. Woo! It's the 1st of October. We've got 10 days until my birthday, or 11. I don't know how you count it. If today's the 1st, then the 11th is 10 days away, right? I don't fucking know. Anyway, wow. Um, it's not a birthday month if you're not crying, right? <laughs> but we're not gonna talk about that. This is the first Gothtober vlog of the year, of the season, of Gothtober and we're gonna have a great time. Says me who doesn't even know what they're reading yet. If you watched last week's vlog, then non Gothtober vlog, obviously, then you will know that I am reading Five Survive by Holly Jackson. I wanted to finish it before Gothtober, didn't. And then I just didn't wanna postpone Gothtober. So it's now a Gothtober read. It's not, so we're gonna try and finish it as soon as possible, but that, that is this week's main goal. But alongside that, I want to pick up something for Gothtober. So I have my stacks of books that I pulled out for my little like not TBR link will be below. But I don't know what I want to read. I'm sort of equally drawn to all of them. Speaking of being drawn to something, I definitely forgot a book in that list because it's a reread. And I mean, I was going to say it's a reread. I had the diviners in there. That's a reread. But I didn't realise... <laughs> As I said, I have been crying today. I'm, I'm a bit fragile today. And I just want something cute and comforting. And so I want to reread Where the Lost Ones Go by Akemi Don Bowman. Because this, this, anything by Akemi Don Bowman just has my heart. But like, I, not spoilers, it's not spoilers, but I, I am a ghost in here. So, I am in this book as a ghost. That's as gothic as I can physically get. So, and I would definitely say this is a gothic middle grade. So, I I just, I want to read this. I just want to, I just, I just, it's happening. Maybe not this week, but in October. This is happening in October. So, that, that, that's happening at some point. But because I didn't mention it in the not TBR video, I wanted to mention it now. You will see this in the coming days and weeks. As for what I actually want to read this week. As I say, I'm feeling kind of fragile and I'm just, I don't know what I want. I don't know if I want to feed in to the fragility and read something harrowing and depressing or if I want to read something scary or if I want to read something cute and comforting. I'm kind of drawn. I was gonna start small with Gothtober. I was gonna start with like a middle grade or maybe two middle grades which to be fair could read to Kemi but I was just I was gonna go with light and just try because like I haven't been reading a lot so I didn't want to like try and dive in and read 10 books in a week and I also didn't want to read like intense books to start with. But I'm kind of feeling Godmersham Park. I feel like this just fits sad girl era. I didn't realise I was in sad girl era but here I am. Era? Era? I don't know how I pronounce that. I need to find a Scottish person to say it naturally. <laughs> Anyway, I'm slightly drawn to this, but if I do pick this up, then I will definitely have to pick up one of my middle grades. Probably the Grip, well, the Griffin Gates Barrington Stoke, and I feel like I could read that in a day, so I kind of want to save that for like a sprint. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what we're reading this week. I don't know what's happening. I'm supposed to go into a gig tonight, but I don't really feel well, so I'm going to do a COVID test just to be on the safe side. But I don't know. I'm here, there, and everywhere, but I am just going to focus on Gothtober and just have a good time. That's so cool. You're just I'm not just in the mood. Cake. You're just not in the mood. Oh, never thought I'd be singing Happy Birthday to a rapper. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday dear. Tippy and Topsy. Tippy and Topsy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to
ever so slightly concerned that I am not going to have a voice tomorrow so jumping in now to tell you that Blue Eyes was so fucking good she ended on the song that I was waiting for the whole night and we all screamed out the bridge and I was immediately like I am sad that I like I've been waiting to scream that bridge for so long and I was like I'm sad it's over and then she was like, we should do that again. So I got to scream the bridge of You'd Never Know twice, which made my life. And then we got to meet her afterwards and she was lovely, but I'm very tired and very sore. And as I said, I was, I was screaming. I wasn't singing, I was screaming. So I really don't think I'm gonna have a voice tomorrow. You might not even see me t today because it's after midnight, but it's, it's tomorrow. Oh, I haven't read. I haven't read a single thing. It's after 1am now and I'm I'm watching Doctor Who because of course. So we're going really well <laughs> with reading for Gothtober. Oh, but it's fine because I, I, today started rough. T today was rough, but it ended on a high. So we love that. Also, I think I might have mentioned, maybe I didn't, I was going to be going to an audition on Saturday for a musical but the communication with this organisation has been fucking horrendous for me as an autistic person. I am not even going to go into it. Like, I can understand why the communication has been the way it has been but I just get bad vibes and I'm just like, you know what, my voice is going to be fucked now so there's no way I can even sing the fucking notes. And I just, I would just rather sleep. Like I know it's only Mon well Sunday, but Monday. But like I just don't want to get up early on Saturday. I just know I don't. So <laughs> there's that. Anyway, I'm, I'm just gonna go crash. Well, I'm gonna finish this, but then I'm gonna, I'm gonna crash. I am going to crash. Maybe I'll read tomorrow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. First things first. Hi. I have not been on my vlog game this week post gig i have been exhausted my throat hurts from screaming i'm just um I'm, I'm suffering the way i knew i would suffer but it was very worth it i don't even know what i've told you this week i don't even know if i told you about finishing yesterday crumb which was fucking fabulous five stars amazing my library does not have the second book and i'm very upset but um anyway i i was just calling this vlog a write-off um Mostly because I don't want to be looking like I look like fucking Casper the ghost and my hair really needs washed It's a whole thing, but I I need we we need <laughs> We need to talk about her royal highness because it's two in the fucking morning and I I just read this sentence And then I realized what was going on and I'm making it sound probably more exciting than it is but I just you know how like my big thing with this book was is the prince looking like Prince Harry intentional and being called Prince Archie who is Prince Harry's son's name like 
it has to be intentional. Like, I'm sorry, it just has to. Because there is no way that those are coincidences and then the names of this girl's fucking siblings are a coincidence. Not royal related, I'll give her that. If she'd called them fucking Charles, Anne, Andrew and Edward, I'd have been throwing the Kindle away. But... <laughs> I read this sentence and as I say, I'm not feeling so hot, I'm I'm a little slow, it's only two in the morning and I'm tired, but I read the sentence and like I immediately just got an image in my head and I was like, why am I thinking about that? Lucy and her brother Peter had inherited their father's fair skin, light eyes and sandy blonde hair, while Susan and Edmund resembled their mother. And I said that and I said Edmund and I was like, that's not a name you hear a lot. And then I immediately thought about fucking Narnia and then I was like oh yeah Lucy, Peter, Susan and Edmund that's the fucking Narnia kids names and I just there's you cannot convince me that's a coincidence alongside the coincidence of the prince of the the, the spare the you the <laughs> The spare fucking prince looking like Harry, but being called Harry. So, like, I'm sorry, I just can't. And the worst part is, is I don't know if I want to keep reading in case there's more things like this, or if I need to just know. <laughs> but like, what? What is the thought process behind that? Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm probably just gonna go to sleep now. Um, maybe I'm just delusional and that's why I'm finding it so funny, but I just, wow. It's a choice, it's a choice, it's a choice. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna go and I'll hopefully, I mean, to be fair, it's only Tuesday going into Wednesday. It's not like I've completely not vlogged this week. There's still time. But there is also still time for the next clip to be me on Saturday being like, <laughs> bye. So anyway, um. Oh, he's moved. He's still doing it. <laughs> oh, you were sleeping with your tongue out. You were. Hello. I haven't read yet today. I have just binge watched the last few episodes of David Tennant's run in Doctor Who have in fact been crying because I literally just finished the end of time part two so having a great time. I'm going to try and convince myself to read some of Five Survive now and I thought that vlogging it might hold me accountable, probably not. We'll see. Once again, still not finished a book. And I'm still completely oblivious <laughs> as to what I have and haven't vlogged this week. I'm just, I, I, I'm, I'm burnt out. I think I'm having autistic burnout, but like, I, I don't know how to fix it. Anyway, my mum has very kindly made my bed for me. We've put, um, the Asda Halloween guinea pig duvet on, which I do also have the blanket for oh dear I've made a mess <laughs> I've got my Halloween duvet on it's not quite Halloween yet but I wanted spooky guinea pigs I I have known about this duvet coming out for months hello <laughs> and it took me forever to find it and I bought it like a month ago and I just I want it on so it's on now as I said I made a mess moving that blanket because we also decided to clean under my bed. There's a whole lot of crap that's been under there for like three years. So we went through it and we gave it a good hoover. It's not like not being touched for three years, but a lot of the stuff, like normally I'd like pull it out, clean, put it back, but we gave it like a proper clear out, clean out, cle clean out and clean out upwards. But anyway, I have, I've made a mess because I found all of these business cards from BookCon from four years ago. It's making me feel weird. It's bittersweet because like it's really nice to see these names of people like some of the people like I didn't know I just met them there but like there's people who I used to be really close with, people who whose channels like I absolutely loved but they don't make content anymore and it's just like like we've got you're a book nerd Zoe which actually 
Zoe has had a rebrand. Zoe is no longer your book nerd Zoe. Um, but she has actually started making content again. So love that for me. I will tag Zoe down below. But then we've got like sophisticated books who Sophie like, oh, loved her content, loved, she was so sweet, spent the couple, a couple, bleh, spent some time with her at BookCon, she was lovely, but like, she doesn't make content now. Tom, I don't really want to show this, because they, they still are on the internet, but like, under different name. you know who you are. <laughs> There's just so many people, like, I just, oh my god, Ghost Reader. I'm just gonna go cry now while I miss everybody from four years ago. Bye. It's time to end this vlog, but first I'm gonna hit myself on the head with something from the head, the, what, what's this called? The headboard? Moving on. This evening was absolutely fabulous <laughs> and completely chaotic. Oh my gosh, I, like, I, <laughs> my life. It's not even that bad, I'm just, I feel like this vlog has been so this whole week I've barely done anything and then today has just exactly so this evening well first of all since this is a reading vlog I read some of five survive today we are reading we are doing good I'm like 250 pages in I'm gonna tentatively say we're finishing this next week but that is for tomorrow's Emma starting a new vlog to to commit to. I also have officially DNF'd Her Royal Highness on my Kindle and have started the Grimrose Girls, I think it is. That's going fine. And I'm also listening to Seeds of Murder, which I think is a cosy mystery. It might not be cosy, but it's definitely some sort of mystery. So that's going fine. We are reading. I also bought a book today because I went to go and see Miriam Margulies at the Usher Hall in Edinburgh, so I got a copy of her book, O oh Miriam. Now, if you know Miriam Margulies, you know she is very chaotic, and we love her for it. Miriam was chaotic this evening, but my evening just generally was fucking chaos. So, to start with, well, to start with the positive, my mum and I drove to town, my mum drove, I sat in the passenger seat, obviously. I can drive, I, I'm, uh, I'm not a passenger princess, I'm chronically ill, okay? Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Mum parked the car in a street that we have never been at, I don't think, ever in our lives. And right round the corner happened to be an Asian supermarket. And I wasn't gonna go in, I was like, I'm gonna behave myself, we're gonna walk past. My mum went, they have cake, what if they have your pandan cake? They had my fucking pandan cake. So my mum bought me a whole, well, the only pandan cake that was there, which was the whole Swiss roll. I just have a slice just now because I'm saving it. Pandan cake is probably my favorite thing on the fucking planet, especially because the cakes used in these, I, I don't know if it's specifically Chinese or Asian in general, but these cakes are, I think they're called chiffon cakes. They are so, so, I don't know how well I can like demonstrate it, but they are so moist, so soft, obsessed with them. It's like eating a squishmallow. Not that I've ever ate a squishmallow and I don't recommend it, but I just love pandan cake. I love it. I love it. I love pandan cake. It's like 
pandan is like a plant and there's, they use the juice from it. It just tastes so nice. I love it. And the only place I have found it is in Chinatown Bakery in Chinatown in London. And I can't, unfortunately, just go down to London all the fucking time as much as I would love to because trains are so obscenely expensive. And don't get me started on the fact that sometimes I look at trains and I can get a train home for £23 but I can't get a train down for £23. Or if I can, it's on different days, which means I just have to spend like £200 on a fucking travel lodge. Maybe not quite £200. I've definitely found travel lodges at 60 But do you think the £60 travel lodges are on the same nights that I can get £23 train? No, of course they're not. So anyway, point is, I'm very excited because I have been looking, when I've been in town, especially during the fringe, I was looking in the Asian supermarkets that I passed and I never found pandan cake. I found pandan mochi, but not pandan cake, but now I've found it. Granted, it's not in the most easy to get to Asian supermarket for me. Let's be honest, getting into town isn't super convenient for me, but it's a lot more convenient than getting to London. Although I did like the excuse. You know, if I wanna go to London to see Back to the Future for the 7,000th time, adding and getting pandan cake was a very good excuse, but it's still a win, okay? So then we get to the chaos. We go to the box office to get our tickets. First of all, my mother, as my mother does, has not prepared, has not found the email confirmation, has not found anything, and is like blubbering about trying to get these tickets. I'm just like, oh my God. Women can't find them. She can't find them under either of the names, my name or my mum's name. She then goes on like the website, and uh, not the website, the computer. Apparently they were posted out to my mum and she's like, mm, not got them. Bearing in mind, my mum has had like three addresses in the past year, but apparently they had her new address, but she didn't get them. Whole thing. Thankfully, I'm saying whole thing. They did very quickly go, it's fine, we're just going to print them. So, hunky-dory. So, we go into the theatre, and I'm going to tell you this slightly out of order because I want to build up the just chaos and mortification. <laughs> so second thing that happened but well technically it's the second thing if we count the tickets just a fucking point one of the things that happened to me this evening was i went to a little water cooler to get some water and i just i didn't even drop it i think my hand just went no and water all over the fucking floor and they only had like a tiny little mat at the water cooler so there was just water everywhere and i had to go and be like can can i get some like tissue to like clean that because I feel really bad the staff member cleaned it because that's that's what they do but I, I just stood there like I'm really sorry if only if only that was as bad as the night got before that I went to the toilet for a pee just just to be clear that's fine except I was wearing my Lucien Yak dungarees which if you know Lucien Yak dungarees you know that they have a massive strap that comes from the back that you put through a loop at the front and tie but obviously you want to take it off you're going to have to untie so I untie one strap and just like take my arm out the other and you've got to like keep a hold of this big ass fucking strap right because it's going to go all over the floor and that's disgusting yeah that's fine except when I got up after having said pee strap went into the toilet bowl so i then had to try and wash the strap in the sink and everyone's like why the fuck is she soaking her clothing and then the toilets didn't have hand dryers they only had paper towels so i had a pretty much soaking wet piece of clothing for the whole fucking evening and I said to my mum, so I, that's when we then went and had the whole water cooler incident, and I said to my mum, things come in threes. Well, we were in the upper circle of the Usher Hall in Edinburgh. The upper circle being the highest level, so the, the poor seats, the cheap seats, the ones they don't give a shit about. And we were right beside, like, where you go in. So you go in and our seats were right there on the aisle, and I was like, this is great, like, bish bash boss were there and I said to my mum I was like you go in first I'm gonna take the aisle and then I can kind of like stretch my leg because it's not got very much leg room and my mum sat down and was like oh these aren't comfortable they're like upholstered concrete which is what we call the really uncomfortable hard seats I bent my knees and as as descended and my butt did not touch the seat my butt touched the armrests or rather like like literally I did not fit in the seat. Like I physically, if if my butt is this big, the seat was this big and I have never experienced that, okay? I have been fat. Okay, I've not been fat my whole life, but I was a fat child 
And then I lost weight in my teens, like my late mid to late teens, and then I got fat again. But like I have I have been fat, right? I have experienced being fat. I have experienced struggling to fit into seats. I have never not fit into a seat. I was just at this venue in December on the level down and was fine. It turns out these seats are different and have these horrendous armrests that don't move. And I mean, like, I, I sat down immediately, was like, I am not getting in this, stood back up, and my mom's like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, ha, I don't fit. Immediately turned to the usher and was like, girly, babe, uh, hun, <laughs> this ain't gonna work. And I mean, because I was laughing, she laughed, but I was like, this poor girl is mortified, which she should be, not her specifically. She isn't the one that like, made the seating. But the theatre should be. Like, we know theatres were built when people were fucking tiny. And we know that, like, they're not, they're not fucking fat person friendly. But it was the first time I'd experienced it and I was like, fuck me. Thankfully, I was in a good enough mood to not be, like, stressed out and upset by it. Um, I was slightly, like, I had to wait, like, ten minutes. I was just standing when my mum was sat because I couldn't sit waiting for the manager to like come and figure it out because as far as I was aware it was a sold out event so I was like what are they gonna do like what are they gonna do but they had seats in the stalls so we technically got an upgrade although we were like further back um but those seats were really comfortable so that was great but um great time so that was fun that was great Miriam was fabulous slightly awkward when she informed everyone that the guy that was like t chatting with her um voted for Brexit in Scotland. He got booed, it was uncomfortable, he tried to explain it. Well, Miriam tried to give him a get out clause by saying would you vote that way again knowing what happened and he said yes and no, that, that got uncomfortable. I was expecting a riot. Like, I was like, oh, this is, this is can, we, can we just not? But it was fine, we got over it and evening was great. And then I met her after the show. So that was just lovely. She was really sweet. She was obviously like in her car because it was wet and she just wanted to get to the hotel but she spoke to people. Um, she let people take selfies. Some people got their books signed and I was going to and then I was like no like I've already spoken to her. I've got a selfie like I don't want to bug her and then somebody else went up and got it and then I was like you know that panic where I'm like maybe I should have. My mum just handed me my book so I went over and I was like oh can I? And she was like no. And I was like okay. <laughs> and like that's fine. Like respect the boundary um she'd already told someone else no when they asked for a handshake because she's worried about covid still she's 82 fuck it i mean understandable whether or not she's 82 but you know what i mean but like it was just so awkward because i was like why i i didn't like not that i didn't want my book signed but like i was totally fine not getting it signed i just was like on autopilot when it got handed to me so like mortifying but no, she was lovely. Um, I mentioned Beep the Meep for the upcoming Doctor Who special and she was like, oh, you're gonna love it. And I was like, girly, I know. Like, trust me, I know. Um, but I'm just on a high. Like, I have pandan cake. I looked Miriam fucking Margulies in the eye. Like, I'm just having a great time, even if I'm- I I'm eating cake when I'm too fat to get in a seat because I- I- I don't care. Miriam stood on that stage and said one of her regrets was not losing weight. Can't relate. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. Well, I'm not gonna stop talking with my mouth full. I'm just gonna stop the vlog. But see you next week, which is my birthday vlog. My birthday's on Wednesday. So, well, by the time you see next week's vlog, my birthday will have happened. But you will see my birthday. I'm probably gonna be crying. Anyway, my tea is getting cold, so.